Please be seated. Welcome, everyone. Bienvenue à tous et à toutes. My name is Pascal Sicotte, and I am the Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Science. I would like to begin by acknowledging that Concordia University is located on unceded indigenous lands. The Ganyahaga Nation is recognized as the custodians of the lands and the waters on which we stand today. Jojage, Montreal, is historically known as a gathering place for many First Nations. Today, it is home to a diverse population of indigenous and other peoples. We respect the continued connections with the past, present, and future in our ongoing relationships with indigenous and other peoples within the Montreal community. A warm welcome this afternoon to our honorary doctorate recipient, Professor Olivette Otelli. Distinguished invité, cher collègue, family and friends, welcome. To our graduates, I am so pleased that we are able to celebrate you in person today. I believe we were able to get through this difficult time thanks to the respect, the compassion, and the empathy that we show one another. My hope is that you will carry the lessons of the past few years as you move through the world and find your place in it. Remember the many ways, big and small, that we can support and uplift each other in challenging times. To your families and friends, thank you for the support you have shown to our and to your students. Thank you for helping them remain tenacious and to stubbornly pursue their goals no matter how out of reach they may have seemed. It is with great pride that I now say congratulations to the graduates of 2022. Félicitations à tous nos nouveaux diplômés. Dear graduates, distinguished guests and attendees, it feels wonderful to stand here today to celebrate our new graduates. Congratulations to each of you. I commend your perseverance, dedication, and hard work. Despite the many challenges and continuous curveballs life threw at you these past two years, you did it. Take pride in your accomplishments. Enjoy the moment in the company of loved ones who played an important role in your success. Graduation is an important milestone. For most of you, it marks the end of your time as a student and the start of your professional journey. The past two years have been challenging. We suffered loss, isolation, uncertainty, and fear. Yet we witnessed incredible fortitude, innovation, and creativity. Concordia transitioned the entire curriculum online in a matter of weeks. Our preparedness allowed us to continue teaching and learning during the time of great upheaval. More importantly, the pandemic revealed our community's true spirit. We saw an incredible outpouring of kindness, empathy, and generosity. Réfléchissez aux leçons que vous avez tirées de la pandémie et d'une période d'énormes changements sociétaux et mondiaux. Les défis que vous avez surmontés vous ont rendu plus forts et plus adaptables. Ce que vous avez vécu restera avec vous pour le reste de votre vie. C'est une histoire que vous raconterez à vos petits-enfants et qui vous servira tout au long de votre carrière. The world is going through a period of monumental change that touches almost every aspect of our lives. 
Add to that the fact that you're transitioning from an environment where everyone told you what you should do to one where you now have to decide what you want to do. Believe me when I say your path will not be in a straight line. That decision, what you want to do, is among the most important you will make in your lives. Be bold, take chances, and do not afraid, be afraid to make mistakes. This is how you will discover what works and what doesn't. Thomas Edison made a thousand attempts at inventing the light bulb. When he finally succeeded, a reporter asked him what it felt like to fail a thousand times. Edison replied, I didn't fail a thousand times. The light bulb was an invention with a thousand steps. Accept failure as part of the process and learn from it. Vous rejoignez un réseau mondial de diplômés de plus de 240 000 personnes. Tirez parti de ce réseau, profitez des énormes ressources et la communauté qui existe à Concordia. Il n'y a jamais eu d'aussi importante pénurie de diplômés éduqués et formés dans la plupart des industries. There are countless opportunities, yet they may be in areas you haven't even considered. With the rapid pace of technology and the advent of artificial intelligence, the world is transforming before our eyes. To thrive, you will have to be leaders of change. Do not be afraid to lead by exerting a positive influence on those around you. When you elevate others, you elevate yourself. When you finally achieve success, remember that you did not do so alone. You were helped by those who paved the road before you and helped you along the way. Remember to give back, whether financially or through the gift of your knowledge and time. Give back to your alma mater and community by investing in its future generation of graduates, just as previous generations have invested in you. Define your success by the degree to which you positively affect your communities. I want to thank President Graham Carr for his leadership and vision over the past two years. He oversaw the university's transition from in-person learning to online learning and teaching. Il aurait été plus facile de passer en mode survie et d'attendre que la crise passe. Au lieu de cela, Graham a pris les rênes de la université avec courage, intégrité, panache et un leadership exceptionnel. Merci, Graham. I want to thank all the faculty and staff who work so tirelessly to provide the best possible education and services to our students and broader community. To the parents, friends, and loved ones who supported our new graduates through their challenging journey, thank you. Finally, to our new graduates, I couldn't be prouder of you. It wasn't easy, and it wasn't what you expected. Yet with the true Concordian spirit, you persevered. Apply that strength and determination to your career and to your life, and I have no doubt you will realize all your dreams and ambitions. Dream big and follow your passion. As a fellow graduate, I wish you all good luck, good health, and good fortune. Chapeau et merci. I would like to ask our president, Graham Carr, to address the convocation. Following uh, Dean Sicott and Chancellor Wiener, let me be the third person to congratulate you. But after all, the third time's the charm. Convocations are a joyous occasion. 
but since our last convocation in November 2019, it hasn't been the best of times. Les difficultés, les tragédies et les injustices sont bien trop présentes, qu'il s'agisse de la terrible guerre en Ukraine, de la fusillade dans une école primaire au Texas, du meurtre de George Floyd ou des découvertes obsédantes de tombes d'enfants autochtones au Canada. Selon l'Agence des Nations Unies pour les réfugiés, il y a environ 26 millions de réfugiés dans le monde, environ la moitié d'entre eux ont moins de 18 ans. L'UNESCO estime que 250 millions d'enfants dans le monde, en majorité des jeunes filles, n'ont pas accès aux compétences de base en littérature. Pendant ce temps, la température du monde devient de plus en plus chaude. Les incendies font rage de manière incontrôlable. Les espaces disparaissent et l'eau aussi. Et puis, il y a le COVID-19 qui, selon l'Organisation mondiale de la santé, a causé 6,3 millions de décès dans le monde au 1er juin. Like students everywhere, your last two years were disrupted by swift adaptation to remote learning, restricted access to labs and studios and campus life that was a shadow of what the student experience is meant to be. And yet, here you are today, about to graduate. In some ways, you, we, are all incredibly fortunate. So how should that good fortune inform how we celebrate your convocation. It's exactly the larger context of the past two years and the present that makes this celebration so meaningful. That you are being celebrated today speaks to your determination, tenacity, and adaptability. But it also speaks to the extraordinary efforts of faculty and staff who were committed to your success. Yes. The last two years were at times frustrating, discouraging, disappointing. But when you compare your achievements with the litany of things happening in the world, savor the privilege and good fortune in being here today. As we celebrate together, let's also imagine what we as a university and you as our graduates can do with our good fortune to bring joy, hope, and beauty to a world that needs your talent. Let me speak first about what I hope for the university. There's a ranking called the Times Higher Education Impact Rankings. It measures how universities perform against the objectives of the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. This year, more than 1,400 universities around the world participated. Concordia ranked in the top 50 for our work to reduce inequality, 20th for how we perform on climate action, and fifth for our leadership in creating smart cities and communities. Not bad for a university that hasn't turned 50 years old. But even more important than the rankings are what those three categories say about our values. Our commitment to opportunity and accessibility, to environmental responsibility, to blending technology with design to improve the quality of urban life for all. It's, working, it's work that's happening across all our faculties, soon to be augmented by the new School of Health we're in the process of designing. And as the name of the rankings implies, it's about impact, research, learning, and actions that make a difference in the world. This is why the lessons of the last two years are so important for universities. La pandémie a perturbé notre façon de travailler, a remis en question les hypothèses fondamentales sur l'enseignement et l'apprentissage, a modélisé de nouvelles approches pour faire de la recherche et surtout 
a souligné que le rythme des choses s'est accéléré et est devenu plus urgent, plus urgent à l'ère numérique. Bien sûr, certaines universités traditionnelles chercheront désespérément à revenir à la situation d'avant COVID, mais les universités innovantes se rendront compte qu'il n'y a pas de retour en arrière. For us at Concordia, the good fortune of this moment is that it pushes us to think differently about our university of the future. How can we accomplish even more to marshal our expertise and advance our values? How can we transform ourselves to exert even greater impact in the world, whether that's the difference we make to our students' lives or how we become leaders in tackling the grand challenges of our time. Which brings me to you, the graduates. I believe there are two key performance indicators that measure university success. How does university research and innovation contribute to the public good? And what do our graduates go on to do? Some of you already have big ambitions for your futures. Others may be very uncertain about the road, road ahead. And that's why this next part of the convocation ceremony matters. At Concordia, we choose our honor, honorary doctorates for inspiration. We look for individuals who've accomplished great things in their respective fields, sometimes in the public spotlight, sometimes not. We also look for individuals who embody our values, including an awareness that the world is not an equal playing field. Nous choisissons des personnes qui ont démontré la vision et la capacité de diriger, d'innover, d'enseigner, d'améliorer, de transformer des individus fiers de penser de manière indépendante qui relèvent le défi créant et innovant. One thing we need to understand about honorary degrees, however, is that the honor goes two ways. The recipients of a Concordia honorary doctorate honor us by their willingness to be part of who we are as a university and what we aspire to become. They honor us by their belief that we align with their values and recognition that the university also wants to make a difference and impact in the area where they are blazing trails. In a minute, you will listen to a citation for Dr. Olivette Atele, African-born, a trailblazing academic, a Francophone who became the first black woman to be a professor of history in the UK, a person of immense achievement at what is still a remarkably early career stage. I'll stop there, lest I steal the words of the citation. And instead, what I'd ask is that as you bathe yourselves in this ceremony, in this rite of passage to the next phase of your lives, be inspired to commit to how you too can apply the privilege of a great education to make a difference in the world. In these troubled times, what makes this convocation ceremony so meaningful is not only that it encapsulates your success and that of our honorary doctorates, but also the evergreen promise that universities are places of inquiry, intelligence, knowledge, and innovation offering solutions to the world. Félicitations encore. Congratulations again on your success. I look forward to the impact you're sure to make. Thank you. Merci. Monsieur le Chancelier, j'ai l'honneur de vous présenter Madame Olivette Otélé, dont nous célébrons l'illustre carrière universitaire et les réalisations dans la lutte pour la justice sociale. Née au Cameroun, 
Olivette Othélé détient un doctorat en histoire de l'Université Paris IV, la Sorbonne, en France. Historienne, elle a elle-même marqué l'histoire. À sa nomination à l'Université de Bath Spa en 2018, elle est devenue la première professeure d'histoire noire du Royaume-Uni. Most recently, the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London named her as a distinguished research professor, a position created to help address the global challenges defined by the United Nations Sustainable Gov Development Goals. She is renowned for contributions to the study of colonial and post-colonial history, memory, politics, and women's issues and the histories of people of African descent. In 2020, the London-based History Lab created the Olivet Otele Paper Prize, open to black UK-based PhD students, to recognize her impact and address the inequities faced by black scholars in academia. And among other accolades, her most recent monograph, African Europeans, an untold history was shortlisted for the Oral Book Prize for Political Writing in 2021. Monsieur le Chancelier, au nom du Conseil d'administration et du Sénat, j'ai le privilège et l'honneur de vous présenter Madame Olivette Othélé afin que vous lui décerniez un doctorat en droit honoris causa. It is my great pleasure to ask Dr. Otele to address the convocation. Mr. Chancellor, Madam Chairwoman of the Board of Governors, Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, honored platform guests, graduating class, family and friends. You've heard about my achievements, part of my journey. You've heard about the glossy part of things, but I would like to share with you what went on, so to speak, behind the scenes. I was born on the edge of the rainforest in Cameroon, Central Africa. I grew up in Paris, but what very few people know is that I became an orphan at a young age and was the oldest of five children. A lot was expected and rested on my shoulders quite early. But I did have a secret weapon, my grandmother. She was a woman who had a tough life, a tough marriage that she managed to get out of. She raised four teenage daughters alone with very little money. She took us in when our mother died at the age of 35. My grandmother loved us immensely. That unconditional love is probably why my siblings and I, and my brother Bob Pola is up here, why my siblings and I are, uh, do rarely suffer from the imposter syndrome. She taught me that rich or poor, immigrants or not, as a black woman, who will face hardship, I belong to where I decided to belong to. Whether I was loved by people in those places or not, I was a full citizen of this planet. She was a healer, she was an environmentalist who taught us a few things that I would like to share with you. The first one is the value of kindness and compassion. 
When I was a teenager, she met a young white man who was 19 years old. He was on the streets of Yaoundé in Cameroon, the capital. He had left Canada, yes, Canada. Traveled to Europe, a backpacker who became stranded to Cameroon with no passport, no money, he was basically homeless. He had broken up with his family and was deeply troubled. She took him in, she fed him, she gave him time to heal, made him part of our family by allowing him to sleep for days, cry for days, and days and weeks turn into months. And two years later, he was ready to contact the embassy and go back home. She taught him about learning to sit, to sit still, to observe life, pain, the beauty in the mundane and in small things in life. The sun, the wind, the smiles, the nature. She did it because she considered that we all need a helping hand, a break from time to time. The value of kindness is towards others, but also towards ourselves. So graduates, you are your best friend. Only you will ever know what is in your heart and soul. So you need to learn to take care of that human inside you. You, he, she, him, her, they matters to the universe, to this planet in ways that are beyond your very own feelings about yourself. I don't know you, but I do know in my core that you matter to me as a human being in this room sharing these moments with me. The second lesson I learned from my grandmother was the value of hard work. I told you about the young Canadian. Well, I was uh, as focused as I was, I found myself in a similar situation, poor and yet unfocused and lost. After the baccalaureate in Paris, I was expected to join university and given the responsibility of the siblings I had, I was expected as a good immigrant, I might add, to do either medicine or banking or business. The problem was that I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I loved literature and history, but these were not seen as a good career option to make money. Here I was, the oldest of five, expected to have a job that, that made money and look after my siblings. I felt trapped, I felt tired, and by that time I had already been working several jobs while studying, from fitness instructor, believe it or not, to tour guide. I decided to travel, to work and travel, you know, small jobs, waitressing, meet people, learn from life, and long story short, I ended up having three gap years. Now, I'm not saying you should do that. <laughs> what I'm saying is do learn to be compassionate towards yourself, patient towards yourself and others. Life is not a race, but a journey. Sometimes family had made sacrifices for you to succeed, but the harvest they are expecting might not be immediate. However, there is always a harvest if supported by hard work in everything you do. Between gap years, I did a degree in business and management of luxury hotels. I hated every second of it. So, at the age of 25, or 24 rather, and half, I went back to university to follow my dreams, history and literature. And then I became a mother at 31 years old, as a doctoral student as well, at the time when most people have finished their doctorate. I'm not going to lie, it was hard having a child and studying, but I did it anyway. Not because I'm a superhuman, no, but because I allowed people to help me. I learned to be patient, and I learned patience from my son, Idris, who is now 20 years old and is with me here today. I learned that I mattered whether I had a successful career or not. I was part of this planet, this earth, and deserved every moment on it. So hard work will help you in so many ways. You will find that you have the capacity to endure much more than you ever thought you could. You are graduating, so I'm actually preaching to the choir. I'm assuming you worked really hard, didn't you? Now, I would like to throw a challenge at you, the first one. 
I would like you to approach your next big task the same way. Give it all you have. Test your limits, your ability to push your own boundaries, and see what happens. You will find, you will find out how just amazing you are, and don't just take my word for it. Try it, test it. The third point I learned from my grandmother is to expect to see greatness and beauty from yourself and others. There is no such thing as mediocre lives. Every single one person on this planet has done something wonderful, even mean people. The key is seeing it, recognizing it, acknowledging it. So your next challenge is either to put it in your diary or on your phone to write every single day what you did or someone did that thought that brought you relief, a smile, or utter joy. Just one thing and at least one thing every day. You will realize by the end of the week just how incredible seemingly little things exist around you in what you have accomplished. And we are sometimes so caught up in our own stressful lives that we don't see them. Greatness is in the little and big things. A successful life, I believe, is your ability to enjoy small and big moments in your life. I would like to conclude on the next challenge. Yeah, I do like those. Find that one thing you think you can't do, but want to try. It can be talking to the person you really dislike. It can be trying that job you want to apply to but believe you will not get. It can be reconnecting with a friend, with parents. It can be giving out some of your very hard-earned cash. It can be stepping up, trying something without knowing where it will lead you. But, and this is the most important point here, your measure of success is not whether you get that thing or whether that person end up liking you. The measure of success is getting out of your comfort zone. I can guarantee you that this is an exercise that teaches you just how adaptable, resourceful, and resilient you are. It is also a humbling experience. Finally, graduates, as you leave this place, some of you know exactly what they want to do. Others may not know. I would like you to consider two things. What you consider failure is a possibility, just as much as success. Success, however, has at its core working hard, harder, the hardest for what you set your mind to. Success is also about taking your time, my three gap years, failing, reflecting, getting back up, getting out of your comfort zone, trying again, learning, sharing, and most importantly, most importantly, giving back to others, always. Concordia, I am now yours just as much as you're mine, right? Let's not stop here but find ways to make equality a widespread reality together. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Otelli. Thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you for sharing your inspirational uh, remarks with respect to hardship, overcoming it, kindness, compassion, empathy, and how it all makes for a whole person with a great, successful life. I congratulate you in many, many ways. Thank you. While our graduates prepare to cross the stage, I invite you to enjoy the music of the Concordia Jazz Trio. Thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. Today marks an auspicious event for each of our graduates, and we encourage you to cheer and applaud the accomplishments of your own. This is, however, a solemn occasion, and we ask that you refrain from using horns, uh, you know who you are, drums, or any other noisemakers. Applaud your graduate heartily, but as she or he reaches center stage, please allow a pause for the focus to shift to our next graduate. Thank you. So let's begin. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Doctor of Doctorate in Philosophy from the following programs, Economics, Education, Religion, Social and Cultural Analysis. Ruzbe Gukacini. Kuchani. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah Joy Flesher. Yasmin Gandor. Alisa Shiroko. Costanza Helen Silva. Jiminy Holt. Christopher William Murray. Ariana Solis. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Master of Magisteriate in Arts from the following programs. Human Systems Intervention, Economics, Applied Linguistics, Child Studies, Educational Studies, Educational Technology, Judaic Studies, Religions and Cultures, Sociology. Gabrielle Boyot. Richard Collio. Dana Flynn. Alexandra Nicole Fornelli. Patricia Garcia. Kelsey Rose Johnson. Benpreet Kaur. <laughs> Carol Wawira Murithi. <laughs> Adil Chin Yi Ong. J. Lucia Plesia. <laughs> Nadia Plummer. <laughs> Yoon Yong Song. <laughs> Mithila Asan. James Kawabena Asante Kusi. <laughs> Ta 
Lillian Adaez Asomonye. Yi Tong Chen. Cynthia Nassin Chu. Fudi. El Naz Hayati. Jan Michael Hargo Muljo. Fatema Rogani. Chloe Asha Sansbury. Salome Testot Ferry. <laughs> Feng Wu. <laughs> Jan Wu. <laughs> Ana Maria Bodea. Alexandra G. Frail. <laughs> Tawa Nguyen Le. <laughs> Jessica Pinto. <laughs> Anne Marie Senegal. Miranda Margaret Reed. <laughs> Julia Tassolain. <laughs> Vera Carolyn Marie Wagner. <laughs> Afifa Ayari. Catherine Bertharium, Berth, sorry, <laughs> Bertharium, hey. sorry. Susie Bouchard. <laughs> Hedea Hizawo. See you, Lee. <clears throat> Leah McMahon. <clears throat> Angela N. Palmer. <clears throat> Azul Robertson. Naveen Salim Saouk. <laughs> Rezala Sultana. <laughs> Emily Christine Bowles. Michael Giuseppe Charciello.
Megan Elise Clare. Samira Dana. Queenie D'Souza. Alexandra Hamel. Huda Johar. Nada Redini. Antonia Macris. Leila Pinkos. Monica Shah. Fauzia Sikander. Catherine Hume. Brooke Bronizowski Murray. Lydia Nicole Fanelli. Julie Le Mesurier. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the graduate diploma in the following programs, Economics, Adult Education, Instructional Technology, Youth Work. Jose El Elias Borondo, Boronda. <laughs> Tanya Ditchburn. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Baccalaureate in Arts from the following department, Applied Human Sciences. Angelica L. Aelio. Olayemi Olufunke Ajala. Julie Maria Akilian. Amanda Selina Amari. Regan Victoria Apesos. Marie Teresa Assar. Tania Azarnia. Cindy Balan with distinction. Alison Barroso with distinction. <laughs> Laura Anne Bouchemin with distinction. <laughs> Francine Beauvais.
Nathalie Daniel Bendek Cruz. Alexander Luigi Berardo. Ketia Bernard. Maurice Simba Bibaku. Sierra Melanie Black. Zoe Johanna Brogis McCambridge with distinction. Daniela Bongiorno. Ria Bhutan with distinction. Manar Boudefa. Sion Alicia Clark Borden. Juliana Boumendil, with distinction, winner of the Robert C. Ray Book Prize in Human Relations, awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in human relations. <laughs> Paulina Burtsev. Maria Ines Britseno with distinction. <laughs> Tina Valerie Brown. <laughs> Christina Brunet. Nathalie Bubik. Yulia Burakova, with distinction. Kathleen Rita Kalagen Gasselderdorfer. Bruno Canavaros Girard with distinction. <laughs> Gwendoline Anne Castillo. <laughs> Rian Chaidan. Roxana Charles. <laughs> Veronica Cherniak with distinction. <laughs> Amanda Rochelle Cohen. Sarah Colatruglio with distinction. <laughs> Chris
Christine Ray Cormier. Maria Fernanda Corona Santoyo. Kalia Cole. Heather Emily Craig. Daniela Cuellar Gonzalez with distinction. Erin Simbalista with distinction. Jenna D'Alessio with distinction. Julian Dandurand Achachi with distinction. Janelle Daniel. Nicole Dilly with distinction. Cassandra Deni. Julian De Hong. Parveir Desi. Rajnit Desi. Emily Dolman with distinction. Samuel Duchesne. Amanda Duguet. Olivia Annie Faroggia. Samantha Chanel Forget. Emma Grace Franker. Isabella Gallinari with distinction. Jessica Gaudio. Joseph Gilles Gendron. Shakila Gérald. Jaime Goldwax with distinction. Julie Graniero. Gustavo Guzman with great distinction. Mire Haddad with distinction. Trevor Lyle Hall with distinction. Tala Harb with distinction.
Chess Lorenzo Harwell. Jeffrey Hébert. Rim Saiki with distinction. Sabrina Yefano. George Michael Yakovu. Sierra Yeran Yanachi Actoro Sian with distinction. Joy Ibrahim. Latife Issa. Olivier Clément de Jean-Charles. Clébert de Jean-Charles. Wendy Jensen. Yuning Ya with distinction. Felicia Joseph Thomas. Thea Sandra Jovanovic. Nechma Celsi Just. Ryan Kastner with distinction. Joanna Marie Kuzam. Corey Kling. Madeline Kornafel. Laura Kovalova. <laughs> Natalia Kuwik. <laughs> Emily Lachance. Mathieu Lair. Shane Kevin Theodore Laverti. Dan Hanley with distinction. Gabriel Lehou. Marie-Laurence Lel Fotso with distinction. Alissa Stéphanie Lévesque with distinction. Tatiana Lokaichis Rodriguez.
Lorenzo Matthew Losa. Suzette Magbujos. Gabriel Mainville with distinction. Gloria Domina Manenge with distinction. Laura Mastro Giovanni. Anthony Ivan Matulik. Netsai Nomle Nem Manga. Elizabeth McLaughlin. Christina Panayota Menegakis with distinction. Emma Milan with distinction. Angelica Amoule with distinction. Nicole Kelly Mouret. Lara Christina Nassan. Bianca Emilia Napolitano. Jérémy Nathan. Hélène Hong Fook Nguyen. Alisa Novinsky. Naomi Ofori. Victoria Oluwadamilova, OK. Caterina Palermo. Stefania Papandrea. Ariane Patnaud. Bethany Prévost. Ami Elisabeth Florence Quirk. Monica Quiroz with distinction. Adam Harris Rabinovich. Daniel Racco. Naima Raha Matali. Angeli Rebolido.
Stefania Restagno. Spencer James Ross. Valérie Rucciti. Milenila Cristina Salvador with distinction. Maral Sami. Marie Isabella Santa Guida. A rouge, Sanzad Sheikh. Kimberly Slackman with distinction. Mekela Benitia Smith. Shooting song. Mira Swaid. Noemi Stafford. Chantal Stafford Abbott with distinction. Christian Daniel Stilson with distinction. Arizona Stropetti. Asil Taher. Eric Tananaya Gam. Kirian Austin Ticke. Carl Thomas. Marie Amala Tiku Tika Tatil. Kathleen Alexa Tsalikis. Koni Tsutsuras. Laura Tudorui with distinction. Karian Vardon. Priscilla Maria Verding Medeiros. Gabriel Vecina. Jaime Hope Weichmag. Vanessa Cara Walker.
Ariane Weber with distinction. Lisa West. Mina Wong. Please enjoy this short video highlighting student life at Concordia before we continue with the calling of graduates. I am pleased to introduce you the candidates for the Bachelor and Baccalaureate in Arts from the following departments, Economics and Education. Valerie Abaddon. <laughs> Abadulis Mohamed A. al -Hajaja. Nabil Awan. Charlotte Andre Yen Ayesi. Gaetan Baptiste Xavier Bastard. Michael Belanger. <laughs> Diane Monique Bellier. <laughs> Alyssa Chagonon. <laughs> Theo Zach Charles. George Nicholas Cristo. <laughs> Alexandra Elizabeth Craig. <laughs> 
Franco Daniel Cristiano. Anthony Delicio. Maximino de Nordenflecto de Figueroa. I'm sorry. <laughs> Matteo Di Lembo. Aga Afan Duranini. Mary L. Hirai. Muna L. Mufti. Reem El Saad. Miriam L. Shebshiri with distinction. Yeah. Liam James Fahey. Yeah. Mario Fanaro. Dominique Gallant with distinction. Shana Hadian. Faisal Azim Hazari with distinction. Mo Hussein. <laughs> Philippe Alexandre Jack with distinction. <laughs> Ion Canala Holborn with great distinction, winner of the Economics Prize awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in economics with a Bachelor or Baccalaureate Arts degree. Weizen Li. Hao Louis. Nazareth Lopez Tavares with distinction. Christopher Joseph Magyar. Mara Metam. Maria Angela Magdubulupan. Christopher Michael McMahon with distinction. Mirko Adonovic. <laughs> Liam Morrison with distinction. <laughs> Micah Muntu Caron. <laughs> Michael David Nandari. Fabio Miguel Nerez Barones. <laughs> Gerard Ponchette de Langlade, with distinction. <laughs> Mohod Kasim. <laughs> Mo 
Brandon Rajajoop. Khaled Lamwari. Parker Dawn Robinson with distinction. John Carlo Rodriguez. Arya Shahid. Aman Salamat. Alexand Samochkain. Seda Shikahanazad with distinction. Tanvir Singh. Siong Su with distinction. Vlad Ion Pregala. Jan Sebastian Tange. Diego Valente. Aaron Walker. Min Wigel Phillips. Jack Xiong. Yamara Arvelo Rodriguez with distinction. Liana Badger with distinction. Erica Bataneri with distinction. Madison Joy Bell with distinction. Jade Berkstaller with distinction. Vanessa Berry with distinction. Vanessa Bovin Peltier with distinction. Victoria Branco with distinction. Annie Chachiotti. Jessica Cataldo. Kimberly Robin Sorello. Benedicti Sherrod. Nadia Cinquino. Laura Dextrace with distinction. Manuela Doss with distinction. Chelsea Fisher with distinction. Teresa Ann Gagliardi with distinction.
Kina Louise Gillespie. Kiana Graham with distinction. Amal Hamami. Melanie Jolie. Anastasia Carpatios with distinction. <laughs> Veronica Lambert Barillo with distinction. <laughs> Jules Berti, Louis Jean. <laughs> Stephanie Brooke Maduro. Anik Daniel Matt, with distinction. <laughs> Catherine McPhee. <laughs> Ashla Kellyanne McNichols. Alyssa McKenna with great distinction. <laughs> Caitlin Elizabeth Marjorie Miller with distinction. <laughs> Mali Monaco. Mali Mali Mon Monaco. Michaela Murphy Bois with distinction. <laughs> Lester Nueva with distinction. <laughs> Adrienne O'Brien with distinction. <laughs> Nelly Ann Owusu. Sonia Marie Pasternak Higley. Kimberly Pollock with distinction. Emily Ann Redmond. Brittany Romito with distinction. <laughs> Tea Sarah Rowe. <laughs> Chanel Ryan with distinction. Sydney Rose Sachsi Tardif. <laughs> Alina Sadi with distinction. <laughs> Jasmine Iman Sam Aldar with great distinction. Liana Salvatore. <laughs> Simona Santarelli with distinction. <laughs> Nair Sarskakian. <laughs> Robina Shokri.
Cynthia Sinthabi with distinction. Ashley Sutton with distinction. Elizabeth Tia Fault with distinction. Sumia Tia Garaja with distinction. Victoria Tiscon with distinction. <laughs> Jessica Three Branco with distinction. <laughs> Brittany Wiseman with distinction. Marian Young Smart. Amani Alo Alaku. Lara Barardo. Marcus Braithwaite Selman with distinction. <laughs> Emily Jade D'Agostino with distinction. <laughs> Mirinda Giovanni Pascalina Delisi. Chloe Julie Duperi. Patrick Raymond Gee. Leah Karina Jankumosia. Nicoletta Coniaris with distinction. Argirio Kosoros. Patricia Coel. Christina Marvalakis with distinction. <laughs> Sabrina Martineau with distinction. <laughs> Kian Rose Miller. Victoria Mudasani. <laughs> Vlad Nika. Yeah! Yosef Ubrahim. <laughs> Junha Park. Christina Pascal. <laughs> Alyssa Ann Polly with distinction. <laughs> Isabella Scarasella with distinction. Kayla Dawn Sidor with distinction. Lorraine 
Ann St. Ong with great distinction, winner of the Ann Stokes Medal awarded to the highest ranking student graduating with a degree in a bachelor or baccalaureate of education in teaching English as a second language. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the Bachelor of Baccalaureate in Arts from the following departments, Religions and Cultures, Simone de Beauvoir Institute, Sociology and Anthropology. Alicia Monique Charles, with distinction. Carl Delorme with distinction. <laughs> Kiana Arabelle Mahoney, with distinction, winner of the Boyd Signard Prize for Religion, awarded to the most outstanding graduate student in religion. <laughs> Kalawit Berhane. Kate Sarah Burke, with distinction. Paulina Chioffi, with distinction. Andrew De Roche, with distinction. Nikiesha Flemings. Pierrette Sophie Manage, with distinction. Florencia Vallejo Ortiz, with great distinction. Winner of the Therese F. Casgrain Medal for Women's Studies, awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in women's studies. <laughs> Leila Shamas Simar, with distinction. Kayla Melanie Adams. Karina Akelian. Kayla Diana Alexander Young. Marena Angelopoulos. Megara Barnes. Paige Bolu, with distinction. Chloanne Bers, with distinction. Erin Nicole Blow. Eleni Rose Bugadis. <laughs> Trina Brown. <laughs> Ezra Gabriel Brunejali, with distinction. Robin Kimberly Birchall. Ryan Thomas Carpanzano. Alexan Sharon with distinction.
Janita Chowdhury. Queenie Huijing Chen, with distinction. Lilian Mai Li Chu, with distinction. Sophia Kotnata. Martin Abraham Kroll. Harrison Jerome Crooks. Cynthia Marie Delvecchio. Saber Durgam. Samuel Paul Deringer. Kaya Nadej Jolela Florence Dubay Snow. Anatole Dumas. Tai Ekpiruol. Lena Frances Soffer Fox, with great distinction. Aidan Galbraith. Serena Gugasian, with distinction. Evangelia Gialamba Bucas. Nasrin Sultana Hussein, with distinction. Emily Antonio Antonia Iannarelli Usal. Ethan Neil Iserhoff Bobish. Shahahia Islam. Aranza Izarategui. Sabrina Izzo. Anna Kaudir, with distinction. Pauline Kazazian. Leticia Ketep, with distinction. Shelby Brianne Knoll. Annika Catherine Cochrane, with distinction. Maya Lamoth Katrapani, with distinction. Margaret Lee. Effie Leusis. Sabrina Linnaeus. <laughs> Yunpeng Lu, with distinction. John McClellan.
Kristen Olivia Mahan. Adriano Marcillo. Ivana Mazumder. Constantine Mejevan. Florence Agnes Mary Mercat, with distinction. Oprah Mutombo. Manur Naim. Jasmine Michelle Norfleet. King Love Aurelian. Jennifer Orleans. Kristen Paparella. Yulia Petrosian. Jody Philogen. Manon Rabi, with distinction. Siobhan S., with distinction. Jesse Sisson. Payman Tavakolrastani, with great distinction, winner of the Everett C. Hughes Medal for Sociology and Anthropology, awarded to the most outstanding graduating student in sociology and anthropology. Manissa Tazamucht, with distinction. Fanny Claude Chuta. Lauren Nadine Terrell, with great distinction. Erica Bridget Thibault. Vanessa Trunzo. Yannick Vanberg, with distinction. Morgan Rebecca Weinmeister, with distinction. I am pleased to introduce to you the candidates for the undergraduate certificate in the following departments, Applied Human Sciences, Education, Interdisciplinary Studies. Tonya James. Frederick Laplante. Elvin Lugo. Vasilios Vrulis.
I'd like to call upon Provost and Vice President Academic for the conferring of the degrees. Would all graduates please stand? Mr. Chancellor, <laughs> Mr. Chancellor. On behalf of Senate, I present to you the candidates for degrees, diplomas, and certificates in the Faculty of Arts and Science. I certify that these candidates have fulfilled the requirements for these degrees. By the powers Granted in the university charter, I admit each of you to the appropriate degree, diploma, or certificate as approved by Senate and certified by the provost. Please be seated. I would now like to ask Kate Burke to give the valedictory address. Chancellor Wiener, President and Vice Chancellor Carr, Dr. Otele, uh, distinguished guests and participants, fellow students, families, and friends, I am pleased to address you today on behalf of the graduating students. Uh, C'est un honor de m'adresser à vous aujourd'hui au nom des étudiants et étudiants diplômés. I cannot believe I'm here today. Uh, I really didn't imagine I would be here. In fact, for some long time growing up, I didn't think I could possibly enter high school, let alone university. Um, when I came to university, I didn't know what peer-reviewed was, I didn't know what scholarly meant, and I really, really didn't know that professors did any research. I thought they were just here to teach. So, um, But anyway, I think that much like pe many people here, I had a dying need to put words onto what I was seeing and experiencing in the world, things I didn't know how to make sense of. We often hear that um, we can feel a bit disconnected from where we learn at school versus where we live outside of it. But I think that sometimes what we learn at school gives us so much insight as to what we've been experiencing for so many years. I grew up an odd, rural, queer nonsense of a child who was far better acquainted with the 200 goats my parents were raising in Perigord, a, south, um, a, a, a region in the southwest of France, uh, than any humans besides my parents, my siblings, and my older neighbor, Eliette. Um, I think about making sense of our worlds and what connect, connects us today. And I think that is really hard because we've all got such different relationships to what we've learned. We all enter the same um, buildings and spaces at Loyola and downtown, but our realities are so different that our connections to what we've learned and in, is almost uh, incomparable. One thing that does connect us today is that at some point we all felt moved or transformed uh, throughout our time at Concordia, and that might look like different things for each of us. That might be a course that stayed with you for a long time, a professor that meant a lot to you, a guest speaker, a classmate, that truly changed the way you think about the world. When I came here, I had many experiences I didn't know how to make sense of, as I was explaining. And the way I explain it is that I carried all these tingling sensations in my body when hearing certain topics, and I held anger and upset and grief and passion and hope. And I had little language to verbally um, express and understand these tingling feelings. So when I was surviving sexual violence, um, I felt so shaken. It felt like my heart and my mind were in concussion for ages. And that confusion, that incapacity to make sense of what had happened to me over these months, was one of the most painful aspects of my survival story. Uh, that was all, like that was a couple of years ago, all before me too. 
And that confusion about me and the person who's harmed me and my environment and the culture around us and the lack of access of resources to vocalize what was going on was most painful. And then later on, understanding that it was part of a broader systemic issue in this isolating, mad-making world was vital to me. Um, and anyway, life went on and I kept on supporting other survivors through the different and limited support options we are given in this present world. And I just kept being confronted with that same gut feeling, that same tingling feeling, like this isn't what we want, this isn't what we need. And I kept, to, I kept going, craving a different model of justice and another world that I didn't know existed. So when I moved to Georgia Gay, Montreal alone and started at Concordia, I was still very much craving words onto feelings. And it is at Concordia that I was given the immeasurable gift of language over tingling sensations. I was guided toward thinkers and organizers, theories and languages that articulated what I didn't know how to say or even to begin to think about. Um, I learned about transformative justice and I really want to thank Dr. Nathalie Betraville for this. Um, and I got to engage in community and even do some research for organizations who sort of the same views. Universities back then felt so unattainable and I frankly didn't understand how useful university knowledge really was to our daily life. But then we were gifted knowledge and perspective and we got to share them with people who looked for them too, you know, outside of school. Ce que je souhaite donc dire, c'est que c'est par mes études universitaires que j'ai eu l'immense chance de pouvoir verbaliser ce que je savais dire, euh, ni même parfois vraiment comprendre à propos du monde, de mes intérêts, de mes expériences et de ma vie passée. Il me semble que l'un des cadeaux les plus inestimables que l'université de Concordia nous a transmis est le fait de nous doter d'outils, d'espace et d'opportunités pour pouvoir poser les mots sur divers aspects de nos vies, de nos communautés respectives et de notre société. Ces outils nous permettent de nous comprendre autrement, de nous transformer et d'effectuer d'autres transformations dans, un, dans nos entourages. So, I want to thank endless members of the Simone de Beauvoir Institute, Department of Sexuality Studies and Women's Studies, who've supported me and, who, and from whom I've learned unbelievably much. I want to thank um, SDBI coordinator and Sexuality Studies advisor Marianne Lopez, Professor Dr. Gada Marus, and Professor Dr. Nathalie Coito for showing me that you value me before I could value myself and encouraging me in many ways to take on different opportunities at Concordia. Um, lastly, uh, and for nominating me. Lastly, uh, in the crowd, I want to thank Florencia Balejo, my first friend in so-called Canada, who taught me so much about intersectional feminism, and my beloved roommate and chosen family, Hani Schoker, whom I always feel at home with every day, anyway. <sighs> I don't know about all of you, but I'm so scared to lose purpose and to forget what has shaken me and changed me here. So I'm gonna propose a promise which I hope will resonate with you. So, may we never forget what transformed us. May we take these lessons and carry them out wherever it is that we're going. May we continue to be students and rethink the world and our roles within it. May we support and pave the way for others like us struggling with the heavy weight of imposter syndrome. May we rest, may we feel many moments of joy, and may we also take with us all of the grief of what things could have been had the world not been unjust, and use them as bricks, founding the worlds that we deserve to build. As this community organizer Maria Mkaba said, hope is a discipline, it is a discipline. Um, congratulations to every single one of us for making it through and, and graduating today. Thank you. Kate, congratulations. That was a wonderful speech, and uh, I think it left us all inspired. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just about wraps up our ceremony. Thank you for being here to celebrate the success of the graduating class of 2022. Graduates, I hope today's ceremony has been yet another exhilarating marker in the time that you spent with us at Concordia. La collation des grades est un droit de passage vers ce que nous espérons tout sincèrement être un avenir formidable et brillant pour chacun d'entre vous. 
avant que vous ne vous lanciez dans un avenir radieux, je peux peut-être vous demander de prendre un moment pour rendre hommage aux personnes qui vous ont accompagné jusqu'à ce que vous avez soyé là où vous êtes aujourd'hui. Some of you, some of your supporters are your fellow classmates sitting among our audience. Some of your champions are the faculty and staff. Yet I have the sense there are other people in the room who deserve to be thanked. So graduates, would you please stand up, turn around, and thank all the partners and families and friends who've helped you to get here. Thank you. Concordia is a great university with the promise of an even better future. And on this day, there is no better measure of our success and no better measure of our potential than all of you. We will always be your university. I would like to wish you all well that you succeed and follow your passions. And before we move outside, I want to leave you with one parting message. May the force be with you. I would like to invite you outside of the room for photo opportunities this ends this afternoon's convocation. God bless you all.